Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com This is number 28 of the, what is it, Let Me Bore You to Sleep, number 28. Let me creak you to sleep, or let me bore you to creak. Andre's decided to jump up on this straight away. Normally he waits a little while, but he's... Why are you sniffing there? Stop it. So, basically the whole idea behind these sessions, these recordings, is I just talk about pretty much anything that I feel like and none of it is going to be very exciting. It gives you the opportunity to just relax, let go and drift away while my boring voice connected to the boring words, making up boring sentences, contributing towards boring stories, which allows you to just get even more bored. And that's the whole point of these let me bore you to sleep recordings. I think the old saying is uh, you get what it says on the tin, which I suppose is the same with anything you buy that's got, that's in a tin, isn't it? I mean, most things in tins have, well, I imagine they all have what's inside. And how would you sell something if you didn't tell the customer what the contents were? It'd just be an empty tin or a tin with stuff in, but some kind of surprise. I don't know if it'd work. But I only listen to my voice or watch the videos if you're watching on YouTube if you can safely close your eyes because my boring voice and my boring stories may bore you so this let me bore you to sleep might bore you to sleep is kind of what I'm trying to say For some reason Andre's decided to come and cuddle me and he's wrapped all around me, it's just looks like he's going to sleep. So you know one of the good things about him not good things <laughs> about him, but one of the things I quite like is so he's got his hands and he's got his feet. And there's something about when I touch his his feet, he wraps his little toes around my finger, and there's something really cute about it because he's got such little feet. This it's like it's an automatic thing, and I just. I don't know why, I just love it. One of my favourite things in the world. Yeah. Give daddy kisses. Daddy kisses. Mm. Oh, okay, blimey. He ran off. He's decided to... Oh, I think kissing my face made him feel hungry. Now he's gone to have something to eat. 
unless he's just trying to take the taste away. Mm. So, whenever I make a recording in a series, this is kind of like a series, but not a series in the sense of um, there's going to be a week, there's so seven sessions and then it's done. This is more a series where it's just open-ended goes on for forever and ever and ever I might be still doing these when I'm 60 and I'll be saying okay so now it's time for let me bore you to sleep 2003 as far you know how many rather than the year it wouldn't be the year would it because it's now 2018 uh, you know, episode 2013 or 2003 or 942. You know, you get what I'm saying. It doesn't have to be a specific number. I mean, it's not really relevant, is it? Because it could be any number because, you know, we're looking into the future. I could have said 405 or 3009. But then... I guess it would depend, I mean, if I did a session every day, which I'm probably not going to, then it would last, that would mean I'd do 365 of these a year. So for 10, I'm now 47, I'll be 48 soon, a couple of months. So you're looking at 12 years, if I'm still doing this at 60, still doing making these sessions at 60 years old, that's 10 years, so it's 3,650, plus a couple of years worth as well, 360, 600, so it'd be, 4,100 or something, so over 4,000 episodes. Oh, can you imagine that? But then who knows, you know, in when I'm 60, I might be talking about completely different things. I might be, who knows, I might be married, I might, I might have a children or stepchildren or grandchildren, who knows? I might have a pony in the garden. You know, I might have a I might have a swimming pool. I don't mean owning a leisure centre. You know, not an Olympic size swimming pool, but I might have a, a paddling pool or something like that or I may live in, on a mountain somewhere. Perhaps gone down the, you know, the spiritual route and decided to live in a cave and meditate all day for years and years. But the thing is, if I suppose if I did do that, then I wouldn't. Either I wouldn't um, be able to make sessions anymore, or they'd be a lot, a lot more echoey. If I was in a cave, wouldn't they? I mean, at the moment, I can make a session, and I can, I can pretty much fart and get away with it without you hearing it. But if I was in a in a cave, it'd be very hard to hide farts in a cave. Maybe that should be my title of my life story, the book of my life. It's very hard to hide farts in a cave. That could be uh, the title. But it's okay. I mean, I don't. 
I don't set out to talk about farting by the way just in case you think that every conversation leads back to farts it doesn't but in a way isn't really that the birth of humanity in a sense farts it's like the it's just one of the first things imagine it's one of the first things we do as a baby is fart and as we get older we also fart you know and we fart throughout I think the only difference is is once we realize what farts are we can laugh at them but then you know when we're babies we don't realize we're farting and I think maybe in older, older age we might not hear it you know because maybe our hearing isn't as good as it used to be and maybe we can't smell as well <laughs> as we <laughs> used to, <laughs> used to. Um, that's just natural to you know I'm, my eyesight oh not that you know I can't really see my my farts but I'm not talking about farts anymore but you know my eyesight is definitely reduced somewhat so if I'm watching television and uh, sometimes I just I can't see the subtitles very well and I'll just have to ask Andre to to read it to me I'll say Andre because I'm reading because sometimes not all it's not like I'm going to be watching a film a foreign film with subtitles because I can't really do the whole two hours of reading off a of television because it's a bit too much so uh, but some films do have subtitles don't they in there you know it's, I just find it easier to watch a film that's in my own language although saying that some of the best films I've seen have been or the most meaningful films that I've seen have been films that made with French Spanish German uh, all different languages and there's something about um, it seems to be more more thought gone into it it's not just all about action all about it's about the verbal about the the conversations but real conversations not not um not like Tarantino conversations that are not realistic you know because no one really talks the way well I've never met anyone that talked the, the way that the Tarantino films talk it's, uh, it's kind of made up kind of made up dialogue and but then that's probably what they call it a script, don't they? It's, it's, it is made up, isn't it? But there was this one film, it was a French film, I think. Pretty sure it was. And it was 1990. What year would this be? 1994. Pretty sure it was 1994 so I had a girlfriend at the time yep I did actually have a girlfriend and I can't remember what I was wearing but she was wearing a white dressing gown I have no idea why I remember that but she, she'd had a bath and she was wearing a white dressing gown and we were just sitting on the settee 
So maybe I still had my jeans on because I didn't live there. So she lived there, so she had access to a dressing gown. But I didn't have a dressing gown because I was just visiting. I'm not even sure, I'm not even sure if I had a dressing gown at my own home at that time because I was living in London and I was visiting this place, this little town uh, which is about 100 miles away from where I lived to be with my girlfriend and I'd go and see her at weekends and stuff like that sometimes But I didn't have a dressing gown, and I'm not even sure if I had one. But I suppose, I mean, she had a nice house, and it was, you know, it's much more comfortable than my little room that I was renting. So it was more, she had a... So out here, I kind of made up for it, but I've got two dressing gowns. But they're not white, they're blue. They're both kind of the same, not the same colour, they are the same colour, pretty much identical. But I, I quite like to get a, I think they're a little bit tight for me. It's not that I'm big and muscular, I mean, of course I am, but it's not just that, it's, it's um, I feel a little bit restricted with them. I, I'd like to have have something nice and loose. Something that's a bit looser around the shoulders. So maybe I need to get a, a bigger size just so that I can relax a little bit more. Because it's, I quite like wearing a dressing gown in the evening. You know, regardless of the weather. I mean, it shouldn't really make any difference what the weather's like because I'm indoors. I don't. It's not like I'm sitting here on my chair and my feet are out, dangling out of the windows. It's you know I don't do that anymore. The neighbours complained, so I just had this kind of. A, I used to, you know, years ago, I say years ago, but it was years, so it's, it's relevant, but you know, you know when someone says years ago, do you some, what goes through your mind, do you think five years, or ten years, or twenty years, or, or is two years acceptable, or do you feel that maybe if it's two years, the person should say two years ago, and not use the term years ago. I don't know, what do you reckon? Anyway, back in, so I moved into my home in April, three years ago. And I am very, very lucky to have this place. I've got my own flat, it's council, it's uh, a home for life really, providing I pay the rent and you know, keep up my end of the, the, the deal. And I'm very, very lucky and I don't always, I don't always appreciate it, I'll be honest. And because I'm a human being and I don't always don't always uh, walk around full of gratitude and I'd like to have more of that to have more of a sense of gratitude for what I do have instead of moaning or instead of complaining you know so I am I am very fortunate so I moved in here it was kind of I think it was the April I think it, I think it was just after Easter that I moved in here and 
I had a, a new carpet put down. There was no carpet. When I moved in here, it was just a, a bare floor, concrete, concrete floor. And there was paint everywhere. And I remember the first time I actually came in here, because before I lived in here, before I moved into this, this flat, I had lived in, I think I must have moved about 45 times since I left school. I think, it might be more than that, but I try to, every now and then I, I try and count them. But uh, I've also had many, 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 many jobs, probably over 40, 40 or 50 full-time jobs as well. So I've not, um, you know, I've, it's been an interesting, well not interesting, but a um, challenging, possibly, kind of lifestyle that I've had at times. Um, not very secure, I didn't feel very stable at times. So, but anyway, I moved out of this place. I had this little room. It's very damp, and uh, I managed to get this place. Moved in here, and it was pretty much just uh, a shell. That it was. I don't mean a sh literally a shell. I didn't sell. There, there you go. There's a shell I found on the beach. Would you like to live there? It, you know that's just being silly it was this is actually it's a it's a flat it's a or you might call it an apartment I don't know it depends um, I've got a friend Sebastian who lives in Germany he's, I don't know if they call them apartments or but he's like social house social housing they call this well we call them council flats it is still social housing and as far as I'm aware social housing is it's pretty in most countries isn't it social housing I might be wrong let me know if I'm wrong That's if, you, if you're still listening and so I moved I came and had a look and I went online and did a Google search, Google Maps, to see where this flat was. And it was a little, it was quite a long way away from where I used to live, quite a long way away from, um, I think it's about 10 miles, something like that, from the town. So it's, it's not easy to to walk to town is probably about three hours, two and a half hours, three hours walk. So it's a long, long, long walk. And I wasn't sure whether it was a good idea to to live so far out in you know, away from everything. But at the same time, because I waited so long and because I was I was really nervous, you know, I was really concern about whether if I turned the flat down would I get a chance you know would I get offered another one so I kind of felt that I needed to take it anyway I was seeing the flat on the Tuesday it was a bank holiday on the Monday so I saw the flat on the Tuesday I came here on the Saturday and the Sunday So I came here, in fact, I think it was, no, I came here the Friday, Friday evening, and I came back on Saturday, that's it. Just to look at the place, I just wanted to come and check out the area, see what it was like, see, and come in the evening as well to see if it, if it was quiet, quiet area. So I came into the flat, so... I knocked on a couple of doors just to try and speak to the neighbours to ask them if it was an okay place, if it was a nice place to live. But no one answered the doors. So I didn't, and I did it again on the Saturday, came back. At least by this time, 
I, had to, I ended up having to walk home on the Friday because there was no buses so I found out that the buses kind of stop fairly early in the evening which isn't isn't the best and then a Saturday afternoon I came back again and it was light and I again knocked on the doors but I got to see what it was like during the day and again there was no answer on anybody's doors so I got more of a sense of what it was like and also I had I'd made sure that I knew where it was so that come the morning because the Tuesday appointment was early in the morning it was about five past nine or something in the morning so it gave me um, the opportunity to make sure that I knew where it was and make sure that I wasn't late I think I still was late but by a couple of minutes I think I was waiting outside and I'd already, I didn't know whether they were going to come down if I, or anything like that anyway so I came I went upstairs uh, I went into the building and the first thing I noticed is when I when the person there's a lady um, she showed she showed me in so she she turned the key and opened the door and there was it was quite dark um in the hallway but because there was no curtains on any of the windows there was light coming in so it was, there was you know there was enough light and also the, the, so I could kind of see around but uh, I, f I didn't realise how big it was inside it was um, so I opened the door, I opened the front door which I, I followed her because she came in first and the first thing she did was show me the um, like a storage room and the storage room itself was nearly as big as the room that I was living in before moving here it was a, it was the wrong shape um, I don't mean that in a prejudiced way it just it was it was more like a, an L an L you know sort of turn a turny kind of shape um, not turnip turny kind of you know it's like a, like a corner and then turn right and then you carry on walking so it's that kind of shape but I was surprised that the I couldn't see greatly in there because there was no light in, in there uh, I discovered there was no electricity at all in available in you know it was cut off there was no electricity in the um, flat at all but I was surprised at how big it was how big the that room was considering it wasn't even one of the rooms and then we walked down and there was no I noticed there was no there was no carpet so it's quite echoey in the hallway and the walls seemed okay there wasn't really much in a way of there wasn't really any marks as much you know it was fairly clean I could see the kitchen ahead of me it was at the end of the hallway so but as I walked in on the left there was the bedroom and it was a nice size and I think rooms look bigger when there's nothing in them as well so it's kind of hard to well for me I found it didn't found it yeah I found it a bit trying to visualize my bed in that room what it would look like how much space it would take you know but outside of the bed I didn't really have much in the way of furniture really I had a, a this tabley thing I don't know what I think I got rid of it actually a chair basically so when I moved in here 
I had a chair, I had a bed, and uh, a small television. That that's it. That's pretty much was my entire, you know, apart from some books, a few books, and some clothes. That's kind of pretty much all I had, and uh, a little laptop, which was okay. It was working okay for the first year or so, and then. So I was trying to visualize what the flat would look like with these things in it. And uh, so it was, it was kind of weird. But you know, I didn't. When I first moved in, oh, I then realized that I wanted to have a double bed. Because having a single bed is was is all I could ever have had in the room before a double bed wouldn't have if I'd have had a double bed in my other room that I was renting before moving here I would have had to sleep sideways so I would have had to strap myself in and you know put basically sleep against the wall if that makes sense sideways because it wasn't enough room on the floor to fit a double bed. There was, I could touch either side, <laughs> I could touch either side of the walls when I was in bed. So it just gives you an idea how, and I, I haven't got, I haven't got basketball arms. You know, I don't, I know they're not that long. It just, general size you know they're not uh, I wouldn't win any awards with the length of or any part of my body but not my arms I wouldn't wouldn't win, win any awards wouldn't be able to start some kind of career with my with my length of my arms so I remember looking and seeing the bedroom and thinking ooh and even the, the paint I mean the floorboards not the floorboards the, the concrete on the floor there was there was paint on there from where well who knows how many years worth of Painting's been done over the years, you know. This this flat's been here probably it's probably the flat's probably older than me. It's probably been here for longer than I have. Which is cool. And it will be with me for the rest of my life. try and keep it and look after it it would be nice if I lived near a beach I quite like to I'd like to live somewhere nice but when I think of living somewhere nice I don't think of living in a nicer home because I'm happy you know as far as it goes this suits me there's everything I need in this place. It would just be nice to live somewhere. I'll give you an idea what it's like. I was just walking up to the bus with my friend. We were just going to go to the shops. And we saw a woman walking walking down the road and we were both surprised so it gives you an idea of the kind of area that I live in is to see a female or adult walking past it's, it just doesn't 
rarely see people. It's just not a very um, public place. It's, you get some people, you know, that live here, of course, but it's not. It's not somewhere that you walk through. It's, you know, don't have any kebab shops or hairdressers. If I wanted to buy more teasers, I'd, I'd need to go to the garage. That's the closest place, and they're just expensive. They're not, you know, so you can't get cheap more teasers. Can't get a box for a pound, like you know, in the pound shop or in Iceland. That's a shop, by the way. That's a. In case you didn't know, I do talk about Iceland. A little bit sometimes, and just to let you know in case you don't realize, because I'm very aware that I've got people from all over the world listening to me. So, Iceland is a it's a shop, it's a store that sells frozen food, not just frozen food, but that's what it's basically predominantly frozen food. So, you go in there, and there's loads of freezers and they pretty much sell anything you can think of really pizzas and potatoes vegetables um, what other things do they sell I'm just trying to think if I go in to the Iceland in my local shop my local Iceland store I first go in on the left hand side there's some bread we seem to have bread in this don't I'm not I, I'm, I'm not complaining but I'm just I think if you've got whether you've got a basket or if you're you know using a trolley bread is pretty much the last item you want to be putting in your trolley or your basket not the first item because it's it's squashy, isn't it? It's squashy, and it can get squashed. But that always seems to be at the door, as if, go and put it in first. And I think there's some eggs there as well. Again, eggs, they need to go on top. So I've got some bread, and put some eggs underneath and put some tins of beans on top. No, I didn't really. I'd So if, as you go in, there's a bread on the left, on the right hand side. I'm trying to think what's on the right hand side. Um, not sardines. But I think there are sardines, but there's because you've got freezers right from the start. So is it the first aisle as you walk down? There's freezers both sides, but above the freezers there's shelves, and on those shelves there are items of food that you can buy. Uh, so some of the stuff could be, let's say, tomato ketchup. And I, I do like Heinz tomato ketchup. Although I don't eat it as much as once I did. Just, yeah, I don't, I'm not that worried about it anymore. Not that it was ever like a major deal. It wasn't a case of, you know, I refused to eat food unless I had tomato ketchup smothered all over it it wasn't that much of a an issue but I did like it I, I still do like it especially on uh, you know something like a barbecue not that I really have barbecues very often but I do like to have it but I just haven't had any for couple of weeks really I like salad cream as well 
But mayonnaise, that's a no-no. That's mayonnaise, that's that's to me it's like it's like swapping underpants with someone that's just run a marathon. You know, I, I just don't want to do it. I don't want. I don't want to have mayonnaise. I don't just don't like it very much. It feels feels uncomfortable. Just not interested in it. Don't don't really not not in love with mayonnaise at all. But the components of mayonnaise I like when they're separate, like eggs. Cheese, spinach, um, beef, fish, radishes. I don't know what I can't remember what what's put what makes mayonnaise, but I like the the individual the individual components. But when it's mixed together, I, I'm not I'm not so into it. you back Andre is in the kitchen doing his uh, I don't know I'm thinking of writing a novel about him some kind of romantic novel you know how the how he met my slipper how he wooed my slipper and maybe wrote poetry, sonnets and declared his love to my slipper. Maybe you know, talking about the first date and yeah, their adventures of love and happiness. Oh, I might just carry on talking about mayonnaise. But salad cream is nice. There's something about salad cream that I really, really like. It's... And I don't have it hardly ever. Really, the only time I really ever have salad cream is if I'm in a pub and I'm having some food like maybe chips or chips and another item of food which is also served on the same plate but it could you know whatever it might be and depending on the situation of course and what I've ordered and what that particular establishment serves you know it depends on what's on the menu but if there's sachets of salad cream, that's what I get. I get salad cream, I get tomato ketchup, I get vinegar, and I probably don't bother with salt. That's one thing, I've not never really been that worried about salt. I think we, we've got salt in so much of our foods anyway. I've never really been a, an additional salt adder. You know, it's not really been part of my complex behavior. Salt is just, doesn't not something I really think about. If I've got a bowl of chips or a plate of chips, I say that because some people, some places uh, will serve chips in a bowl, some will serve them on a plate, some places, and I don't, I can't understand why, some places will serve them on a piece of wood, like a flat piece of wood. It would need to be flat, wouldn't it really? If it was all jagged and you know lopsided, things would fall off, and it wouldn't really work, I suppose. But 
never really done why it's like it's like a little bread um, a bread slice of thing you know that you put the bread on and what do they call it oh yeah breadboard so I think breadboards are fine for bread and I don't I don't want to be prejudiced against you know other types of things that maybe can be sliced or or prepared you know I do understand that not everything is bread there are other things apparently um, so maybe you know I focus too much on the on the the bread aspect of of the slicing and the board which is called a bread board but I just I don't don't feel that that's necessarily the right thing to serve food upon and I, I don't I don't mean to disrupt anyone's uh, lifestyle at all you know I, I'm I'm pretty easy going with most things and and I understand this it's, it's all it's all down to personal preference isn't it and when I got into the a bit further up I left the bedroom went into the the living room and as I got in there I thought to myself I wonder whether I, I should have finished that conversation about breadboards and salad cream as like abruptly as I did maybe I should have like wound it down a little bit before just going back to talking about the flat and the, the living room but it's just I don't know it, I felt a bit like be like planning a wedding I kind of got so involved in it that I wasn't sure how to uh, escape so yeah I just um, <laughs> had to sort of move on to something more interesting and get back to reality and enjoyment so I'm back, yeah, so I'm, I'm in the flat, looking around the living room. The living room's bigger. It's bigger than the, uh, the bedroom. What struck me, what didn't strike me, but what, what I noticed really, two things I noticed. There might have been more than two things, but two things that I, um, well, kind of two things I'm noticing now as I'm looking at them, but. two of the things I noticed first of all is how big the windows were and how much light was coming in so the, the windows are pretty big there wasn't any curtains or anything like that in them or on them another thing I noticed was the size of the radiators because the size of the radiators were the length of the window in both the living room and the, the or the lounge and the bedroom never really know what the difference is between a living room and a lounge something about the living room was so it's a room you live in the lounge is that a room you lounge about in well this is probably a bit of both. I do do a bit of lounging. I'm kind of lounging about here. But you could say this is my recording room because that's where I do my recording. Where I talk.
talk, it's my talking room, it's my watching television room, it's my eating room, it's where I eat, it's where I work on the internet, it's room, so it's, it's kind of everything. The only thing I really do in my bedroom is sleep, which is a kind of sad admission to be fair, but you know, but it's it's a sleeping room. I don't I don't spend any time in there doing anything else apart from sometimes I'll I'll play with Andre and we'll jump on the bed and you know we'll play hide and seek and stuff like that. And he'll uh, destroy some of my clothing, but he does that anyway. It's not really relevant to the the bedroom. There's not really much in there. There's a wardrobe and there's a set of drawers, which has, you know, I think three or four drawers, and that's where I keep, you know, some clothes and stuff like that. There's not much really happens in there. I do wonder if I ever, in the future, manage to get myself a, a lovely lady that thinks that I'm just superb. <laughs> thinks that I'm just like very, 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 very lovely, and maybe I think that she's rather nice as well. And perhaps eventually we decided to um, I don't know what the right word is but you know live together in, in the same space share the same oxygen you know the same live in the same accommodation and I suppose the bedroom would then be used a bit more, you know, for getting ready and maybe I need to redecorate it and put some nice bedroom furniture in there. And, but I do have a double bed. It's nice, I like my double bed. I don't think, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go back to having a single bed again. I like being able to just spread, just, you know, spread my arms out and my legs out, and to do that without hitting a wall is nice, it's nice to do that without hitting a wall or falling out onto the floor, it's nice, you know. And then I went into the kitchen. Well, actually, I went into the bathroom first. And the bathroom's not big, but it's, it's probably bigger than the other bathroom I lived that I had before. But that was a shower, so it was quite a big room. But it just had a shower in it. But if it had a a bath, then it would have been it would have made the room a lot smaller. So this, you know, I've got a bath and a toilet and a sink and there's quite a big cupboard in there which used to be the airing cupboard, I do believe. So there's a bunch of shelves and, you know, quite a lot of room in there to put stuff in there. So that was, that was okay. That was a, a nice enough bed, you know, bathroom. And the kitchen went in there. So there was no, there was no, um, what's it, something you cook on, cook it, cooker, there was no cooker, and there was no, you know, I didn't really have much in there, there was a boiler, because that comes with a flat, and there was windows, and there was uh, kitchen cabinets, so what was that, one, two, one, two, two on the wall, and then one, two, three 
underneath but really just one that I use underneath the other two are a bit you know, one's under the sink so that's not really a proper cupboard can't really don't feel I can put anything under there although I do so I suppose that's a, but nothing I don't go in there regularly and um, the other one to the left I don't again I, I keep a few bits under there but not much and then there was a gap where the cooker needed to be and there was a gap underneath the the kitchen not table but you know the, the top of the kitchen where you can prepare food and stuff like that there was a gap where the fridge could be the thing is I didn't want well, when I first before you know I got in there I, I decided to take the flat admittedly the, the lady said that I could choose now or I can choose I can let her know at 1.30 in the afternoon that was the two choices I had and then she had a phone call and she said that that's the person outside was waiting to see the flat so someone else, there's a bunch of people who are going to also come and see the flat. So I just said, um, I'll take it. And I did, I took it. So I got myself, um, what did I get? I bought a cooker, a fridge, and a washing machine. All in one go, which came to quite a lot of money, and I had them all delivered and I got the washing machine connected but I didn't um, my dad connected the cooker and the fridge was just the case of just plugging it in but the fridge was too small which I wasn't really it's, it was like going back to what I already had I already had a tiny little fridge with a tiny little um, compartment for the freezer so what I thought is I need another one I need something a bit bigger but luckily my dad had a freezer for me to offer me so he he brought a freezer around so I put the freezer underneath and the fridge on top of the cabinet on top of the, you know, the the kitchen table bit. So I had basically a fridge freezer, but they were broken up into two different things. And then, probably about a year ago, I got myself uh, another freezer as well, separate because it's, it just gives me a lot more space to put frozen stuff in. And that's it really, that's, when I first moved in there was no, um, there was no electricity, there was no gas. So I had to get the electricity changed over because there was a, a debt to the person that lived here before so they had to have someone come in and fix that the same with the gas same with the water I had to do all this stuff so I didn't have any electric or gas for a week so I couldn't start really I could do stuff painting and that during the day but it's you know, come the evening now, I couldn't see anything, it was dark, you know. But eventually it all came together. And probably a couple of 
couple of weeks after I moved in, two or three weeks, I got the carpet. So that was nice, had the carpet in the whole place, so it looked really good with the carpet. So that was probably in June, May, May time, probably I got the carpet. And then in September I got Andre. And he absolutely ruined the carpet. Also a neighbour gave me a settee. And Andre absolutely ruined the settee as well. <laughs> ruined it absolutely, completely. He loved that say. I should have kept it really just for him to play in. Because he loved it so much. Anyway. That's the end of that story. Well, it's not the end. It's kind of the beginning in some ways. But as I was talking about the dressing gown, I always remember sitting here on an evening at probably November time, watching television, and Andre, who was, I'd had him for maybe a month or two, and he'd been, he was hard work, you know, he wasn't very affectionate to me or anything for quite a while I, had, I was constantly picking him up and he was trying to get away from me and he'd play with me and stuff but he just wasn't very affectionate and then on this occasion he was tiny still and he climbed up my leg and he climbed up the sleeve of my dressing gown and just went to sleep and he was asleep there for hours and I was carrying him around going sort of trying to go to the toilet going into the kitchen still trying to keep him in the sleeve because I was so happy that he'd decided to just cuddle up with me and from then on but he's, he, he did it every day after that doesn't do it anymore now but He's way too big to fit up the sleeves. But he was tiny. And that was, uh, it felt for me, quite a bonding experience. It showed that he trusted me enough to, for him to just fall asleep. You know, in a situation like that, just inside my dressing gown sleeve. I'm already, I already fell in love with him long before that, but that I just, I, I fell even more in love with him. I think I thought, I think I love him more every day. It's kind of weird. Anyway, that's me. I'm gonna go. Hope, hope that I bored you completely. And I will speak to you next time. My name is Jason Newland. My website is jasonnewland.com. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, I do have a hypnotic buffet Android app. So check that out in the description if you want to download that. I might get an Android app for these Let Me Boy to Sleep which might make it a bit easier for people to just listen because there'll be an app and it'll just automatically be there um, but I'll just have to see because it's cost me $100 to do it anyway, thank you for listening and I shall speak to you next time lots of love bye